guys got it. Really beautiful. Yeah. Mike's Music Method. Boom! Come on in, y'all, you chicken pickers. We are doing a great song today, Towns Van Zant's, for the sake of the song. One of these tunes that's like was in his career forever, you know, opening track, first album, many different live versions and um, variations of this song. Here I am doing the one off of the old quarter, live at the old quarter. Towns does capo too. I kind of forgot, um, and I don't have a capo on it in this recording. Remember, Towns does capo too, though. Guys, this is an awesome beginner piece. If you are new to uh, finger picking or new to Towns Van Zant, this is actually a fantastic one to start with. Of course, there's the entire Travis picking playlist up here. Dive in, enjoy. But what a cool, simple beginner piece. There's one little flourish at the beginning, but it's not even that complicated. So this is a, a great one, great study piece. Um, and if you're a good picker, whatever, still learn it because you can really smooth it out. And uh, this song is just great. Uh, many of you have requested it over the years at Mike's Music Method. So I'm finally bringing it. Towns Van Zant, for the sake of the song, let's do it. You guys are going to nail this one. I know it. You can learn it. Let's do it. Yeah. Boom. Very quick note. Sorry. Capo 2. Towns does Capo 2. I already recorded almost the entire song. I'm not going to put the Capo on too, but just know this is live at the old quarter version, and Towns does indeed have the Capo on the second fret, but I guess for the sake of simplicity, we're just doing it a whole step lower. Apologies. But it doesn't make a difference, does it? Not really until you start singing, but as I've said before, always mess around with the key of a song. Your voice is not Towns' voice. There's probably a different register where you're going to sound better than he is if you're singing it. Don't be a purist. I spent way too long sounding like an idiot because I was a purist where I try to sing like Paul McCartney songs in their original key. That is completely foolish. Don't do it. Always, 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 please trust me, play around with a capo and, you know, sing it uh, different days of, you know, the week. Your voice might, you might be a little sleepier one day. So mess around, you know, for like several days where you're moving the capo up and down to find what, you know, what in which key you sing it. You, 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 you're the one singing it. So the key in which you sound the most beautiful, not the key which Towns sung it in in 1972. So you could be pure with your playing. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. Change the key to fit your voice. Measure one. Let's do this. I'm using a thumb pick. You don't have to. Towns does. He also uses those crazy finger picks. I don't recommend that. I did that for a while. More effort than what it's worth in my opinion. But the thumb pick is great. I use a bumblebee. Um, I'll put links down below. It is an affiliate link, so I make a very small amount if you guys purchase uh, the Bumblebee thumb picks, but I like them because they're adjustable here. See? And then they're adjustable, you can swing them this way. And I also like that it looks and feels like a pick, so if I want to do a run, I can just like put my pointer finger down and then hold it like a pick. And an alternate pick. So they're pretty cool, they come in different sizes and shapes and all that. But you can also just use your thumb I do a lot of that too. So you don't need gear. No capo in this song. We start on an A major chord. I am fingering it like this. Again, this isn't a hard rule. I suppose you could use these three fingers. Um, you could even bar it with just one finger. But for me, that's hard to get the top string to ring open. I mean, it can do it, but it's, it's not typically my go-to. So check this out. We've got the thumb on the fifth string, pointer finger on the second, middle finger on the middle. And that pointer middle is, they're always gonna be resting there for, for the majority of this song. That's gonna be the pattern. So thumb on the fifth, then the second string with my pointer, first string with my middle. Then the thumb is on the fourth string, and then I do pointer middle again on the second and the first. So fifth, fourth, then the third string with my thumb here, and then just the pointer 
that's the eighth beat, so it gets cut off. Thumb, pointer on the second. So we've got fifth, fourth, third, and one more time slow, and then that'll be the, the kind of 90% of the song right there. So we got thumb on the fifth, pointer on the second, middle on the first, thumb on the fourth, and then again, pointer on the second, middle on the first, thumb on the third, and then pointer on the second. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And to geek out a little bit longer before we get moving, right when I play that thumb, I'm prepping both pointer and middle. We call it I and M. Pima, right? P-I-M-A. So play the thumb, prep, I and M. Play I. The moment I play M, I prep my thumb and get it ready for the next string. Then the moment I play that thumb, I'm prepping I and M and getting them both down. Then I do I and prep. Right when I hit that middle finger, I'm prepping the thumb onto the third string this time. Then the moment I play that third string, I prep I and M. Measure two is a little different, but I promise that we spent a long time in that first pattern because it happens throughout all the song, with the exception being here in the intro. He goes to a D chord in the second measure here. And I'm gonna fret it like this, just because we don't need the entire D chord. So I've got my pointer finger on the second fret of the first string, then my middle finger on the third fret of the second string. And I'll show you why I'm doing it that way in a second. It's because we got a cool little run. So we have the fourth string open with our thumb, then pointer on the second, middle on the first. And it's just that. And then we do a little run here. Fourth fret, and then I slide four to five, then back to four, then two. That's all on the first string. So we got the little arpeggio at the beginning, fourth string, third, Second, and then we already do a little melody thing. Four, slide four, five, back to four, then two. And pay attention to my fingers. Sorry. That's all ring finger there. One more time, three, four. Pew. I'm coming back in time, I'm from the future. And I've played the song through a bunch, and I would probably pick all of those notes on the D for the intro. So I would use my thumb for all of them. Think you got it? Let's do one and two together. Three, four. And that whole time, if you want, you can let that D ring out open. And then at the very end of the tab, all the tabs are free to download, mikesmusicmethod.com. What a guy, free downloads, nothing. You don't have to give me anything. Um, but if you download my tab and you scroll way to the bottom and go to measure 42 here, here's like a slight alternate thing. He's kind of replacing this with the intro. Sometimes it's hard to tell, but I'm hearing this once in a while. So the moment he goes back to hit the open A, he's, he landed on that too, and he's pulling off the moment he hits the fifth string. So one more time we have, sorry. So you hit the two, get ready to hit the five, and at the same time you hit the five, you pull off that first string. It's not that loud, it's pretty subtle in the recording, but every once in a while I'm hearing that and it gives it a nice, gives a really pretty feel. Good news, measure three is the same as measure one, so let's do it. Four is the same as two. Five is also the same. And then we have new material here in measure six. We have an E major chord. Voice it real simple, like a normal E chord. And we have six, two, one. It's still pointer middle though. Sixth string, second, first. Then we go to the fourth string. Then back to second, first. 
Then he does the third string with his thumb, and then the second with the pointer. So the strings are six, two, one, four, two, one, three, two. Then measure seven back to the A chord, a little bit different here. back into the A. So let's play this slow measure seven. Got five, two, one, right? Thumb pointer middle, four, two, one. Then the thumb on three. Normally here we do three to two, but here we do three, and then our thumb goes to six. So that whole measure, three, four. And I'm doing double thumb there, three, four. That's the entire intro. You already got it. Ah! Let's do the whole intro nice and slow from the top. Two, three, four. pitch guys i am stupidly excited to announce to you all that i now have a p.o box a post office box yes i don't know why i'm nerding out about it but i'm so happy about it so anyone who wants to snail mail me a donation that's awesome guess what paypal takes a cut of, of the money patreon takes an even bigger cut but not the p.o box if you're willing to pay that 35 cents for the stamp, guess what? That's it. That's the fee. You write me a check. It's awesome. It's a great way to support the value for value model and Mike's music method. So it is P.O. Box 152, Wildwood, P.A. 15091. I got a P.O. Box. <laughs> yes. Anyway, to everyone who's been supporting, as always, you guys rock. There's over 100 of you pitching in, supporting Mike's Music Method. It's amazing. Uh, but guys, I would love to be able to pour more time into this channel, and I want to keep it free. I, you know, Honestly, I could make a lot more money if I was charging for every tab. There's tons of people visiting my website every day, which is awesome. Get like 80 people there a day downloading a tab. And guess what? That means every day there's 80 people getting a free download because of your support. So if you're not supporting, consider that. Um, maybe it's 40 bucks a month. It's like a 20 bucks a month Netflix subscription. Whatever that value for value model is to you, I don't know, could be worth guitar lessons every month. That's like $160 a month. A cup of coffee. Think about it, consider, and not only are you helping me out, but your support keeps this free for everybody else. There are so many people getting a great finger-picking education here at Mike's Music Method because of supporters like you. Because of supporters like you. Now I'm like doing my PBS pitch. Supporters like you. Because of supporters like you. Welcome to NPR. Because of supporters like you, we're able to continue. Anyway. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> what am I saying? I'm saying it, the value for value model. I put a lot of time and effort and talent into this stuff. And so give a little bit of that back. If you're down on your luck and you don't have money right now, just write me a really encouraging email or, or send me a video of you playing one of the songs you learned from the channel. That goes a long way. Or use your talent. Get Tell me how to light my room. This looks ridiculous. I look orange all the time. So if you're a lighting expert, give some expertise back. It's a value for value model. It doesn't have to be monetary, but monetary does help quite a bit. End rant, let's keep going with For the Sake of the Song. One little note, we'll start doing the verse. 
He is playing everything legato, so I was kind of palm muting a little bit in there. Don't do that. The whole thing is really open sounding and smooth. Right, that D really does ring out when he's doing those melodic notes. Boom, it's still ringing. So it's all smooth and legato. But let's get to the verse, guys. We are just gonna cruise through the song. The pattern ends up being the same. We just play through the chords. So we start the verse in measure nine with your free tab downloaded at mikesmusicmethod.com and it's the same thing. Five, four, three. Right with the thumb. Same thing, measure ten's the D. Oh, we didn't do the full D, but here it is. Fourth string, second, first, then the thumb on the third, second, first, then the thumb on the third, and the second again. Remember, second, first are always pointer, middle. Three, four. That's it. Measure 11 is back to the A with the interrupted. Three, six. Right, we've seen that before. And then back to a normal A for 12. Same thing with 13. Let's play through those from nine with, with the melody so you guys can hear it. Three, four. Why does she sing the sad songs for me? I'm not the one. The tender they bring. So that's the A back to the D. which takes us into measure 16, which is just a normal A again. Then 17 is an E, and here you'll notice it's live, so it's not exactly the same every time. This first time he does it like this, six, four, four, is the thumb pattern, and it's always six, two, one, four, two, one, four, two. But then the next time he does this, six, two, Four, two, one, three, two. And almost every other time he usually does that pattern. Six, four, three. But the first time he doesn't. Is it a mistake? Probably. But again, it's towns. He knows either string set's gonna work. It's not gonna sound bad. It's just, did he vary it up exactly how he wanted to? I don't know. I think he missed the string. Six, four, four, six, four. I would probably do it the second way every time, six, four, three, six, four, three. No reason not to. Let's keep going. Measure uh, 19, back to the A. With the E in the bass, and then right at the 20. 21's back to the E, and here indeed he does do what I just said, six, four, three with the thumb each time. Six, four, three, six, four, three, Back to the A and measure 23. We're almost done with the verse. We've got an A7 here in 24. And this is a cool voicing of an A7. An A7 is an A chord with an extra note in it, the flat seven, which is a G. And here, instead of doing it open on the third string, it puts it up high, uh, which is a really common blues voicing, right? Like a Lightning Hopkins way to play it, where we're barring the A chord, but then on top, instead of playing open, we've got the third fret. And you can do it like this, you can do it like this. Um, I've seen, you know, either whatever's easier for you, uh, but we this is our picking pattern, it's gonna be the same. Five. So it's the same pattern, but instead of having open on top, now we've got three on top. And that A7 is the, the five of, what key are we in? A, A, it's a five of four. So in the key of D, the A is a seventh chord. So he sets that up to bring you to that D chord. But I'm not gonna get into a long-winded theory talk. Not getting distracted, we're staying on point. Ooh, before we go to the chorus, let's do the whole verse. I'll put the lyrics in so you guys can feel it out here. From measure nine, two, three, four. Why does she sing? These sad songs for me, I'm not the one. The 
tenderly bring A soft sympathy I've just begun To see my way clear It's plain if I stop I will fall I can lay down a tear for her pain Just a tear and that's all then it's the A7. Sorry. So that very last time I messed up, there is no, uh, there is no low A that time. Usually when he transitions to the E, he hits that low A. But in measure uh, 23, it's just a normal A. And it's replaced by the A7. And here we go into the, I guess, the chorus. And it's on this D chord in measure 25. And here's like the, I don't know if you'd call this the chorus, this is one of these beautiful songs where it just keeps going and you don't really know when the chorus is. So 25, we're on the D and it's the same as normal. What does she want me to do? It's back to the A, back to a D. She says that she knows. And now this is a weird little moment here in 27. He does four, three, four back to that fourth string instead of the third. Again, it kind of sounds like a mistake. He doesn't do it the other times. It doesn't sound bad, but he's never doing that pattern elsewhere. So don't like feel like you need to put that in. It's very insignificant. Um, you know, just keep it doing the four, three, three as a thumb pattern. Then 28, we go to the E chord. That's the same as before, back to a D. Same D, 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 and then ends on the A with that low E. And we'll sing all this together in a minute, but I'm just kind of talking you through it. Let's finish. We got 36 as an E chord. Same pattern as always. And back to an A. to the E for the turnaround, and we're there, and then he goes back to the intro. Yeah, let's sing the chorus, but guys, that's it. You got the tune. Congratulations. We'll do some slow run-throughs coming up in a second, but let's put some words to it. Boom. Let's sing it now from 25 from the chorus. Two, three. What does she want me to do? She says that she knows Moments are rare, I suppose That it's true Then on she goes To say I don't care how she knows That I do has to sing for the sake of the song Ah, who do I think that I am to decide that she's wrong Sorry, then back to the A which is the intro again <laughs> I messed it up, but it snuck up on me Back to the intro and boom! That's the entire song We did it it's real simple, super pretty though. And dude, what a study piece in, in one, four, five, right? I mean, it's just it's literally A-D-E, this entire song, but because of the, the beauty of the melody um, and the way the chords, you know, they're, they're just a little bit different each time. Does it go back to the four, back to the one, go to the five, but it's just four, sorry, it's just three freaking chords, A, D, and E, and Towns is a master songwriter. This is why we love him. Super simple, nothing crazy, but beautiful and captivating in typical Towns fashion. All right, our slow run through from the top. I think we can do this all in one go, guys. All right, from the top, you got your tab open, free tab, mikesmusicmethod.com, and here we go. One, 
two, three, four. Got it. Really beautiful. Yeah. Ah!